Okay, welcome to the second lecture. It'll be a multi-part lecture, but the second lecture in the Introduction to Econometrics class where all we're doing so far is getting an intuition, a, a gut feeling as I call it, into what are we doing. And in the first three-part lecture we looked at modeling a relationship uh, between two variables with a straight line. We looked at horsepower and the price of a car and then we added a dummy variable which was zero or one uh, to represent whether a car was a domestic car or not. Now we're going to look at the situation that arises very commonly. What if the relationship is not a straight line? How can you deal with it? And so sticking with the car data I'm looking here at horsepower on the x-axis trying to explain miles per gallon in the city of a car and I have had uh, my statistics program R that we'll be using to tell me what is the equation of the line that best predicts best predicts this relationship and you see this line and you see it's doing a pretty poor job because I see a curve here going down curving through and you can pretty uh, easily spot curved relationships in a situation like this because we can see a pattern in the residuals, the error terms, remember, the actual miles per gallon of a car in this case and the predicted, in this case uh, this car actual maybe 46 miles per gallon predicted 30. So this is a positive residual, 46 minus 30, 16 miles per gallon and all of these are positive because the actual bigger than the line on this far end for high horsepower cars they're also all positive and in the middle they're almost all negative negative. and since we have this predictable way that we're wrong uh, we should build that in to our model of the relationship rather than just using a straight line but let's look at this straight line quickly for reference uh, the y-intercept horsepower zero would be about 32 and the slope if I pick another point around here uh, horsepower equals 200 on the line and 20 miles per gallon then we'll get this equation where um, miles per gallon equal 32 minus the rise is down 12 minus 12 the run is over 200 12 over 200 0.06 and it's negative so 0 0.06 times horsepower and so we could interpret this as if a car had zero horsepower we would predict with this model about 32 miles per gallon which is a pretty bad prediction look at all these cars with much higher gas mileage and not zero horsepower um, now again we don't really literally translate this that way a car with no horsepower doesn't make sense um, it wouldn't use any gas probably so uh, but the slope is what we're really interested in here for each additional horsepower miles per gallon will go down by 0 0.06 miles per gallon or for 10 horsepower 0 0.6 miles per gallon for 100 horsepower 6 multiply that by 100 down 6 uh, miles per gallon uh, but again this is the wrong thing to do because we have this pattern in our residuals uh, all positive on the ends all negative in the middle and we can pretty clearly see that curve relationship uh, now, this is a handout that I use in my uh, course at North Carolina A&T State University um, to go through this but I want to show you uh, sometimes it's not as easy to see in a plot if we're just using one variable usually we'll use more than one explanatory variable not just horsepower to explain miles per gallon but also later on we'll use weight of the car and uh, type of car and uh, is it does it have four-wheel drive um, is it a foreign or domestic car all these things might be important so the the easiest way sometimes in practice to see this nonlinear relationship is just by looking at the residuals themselves now we'll talk about this more in detail later but this is a residual plot where it's got the predicted values on the x-axis and the value of the residual on the y. Here's zero. 
This is when we predict correctly zero residual. But you can see over here they're all positive. Over here they're mostly positive. And in the middle they're negative. And the statistics program we're using R shows us with this red line that there's a curve in the residuals. And so maybe we can get rid of that by including a curve in our relationship. So how do we do that? There are two common ways. First is to use logarithms. And I think about logarithms as straightening the data. Second, we can use a polynomial, like a parabola, x squared, or we can add in an x cubed, x to the fourth power, and allow our predictions to curve. So I think about logarithms as straightening the data and polynomials curving the predictions, although uh, literally speaking, they're, mathematically speaking, there's, there's no real difference, but it, it's a way to, to think about what we're doing. And as you'll see below, I've taken the natural logs and it does make the relationship look straighter. But before we get going, uh, we need to make sure we understand what a log is. And let me point out that uh, in econometrics, normally we use natural logarithms, um, not log base 10, which is another common one. Which basically means uh, the base of the natural logarithm is uh, 2.718, and we're asking uh, sometimes called e, right? Oops, small e. Uh, and we're asking what power do we raise 2.718 to to get the number? For example, if we take the natural log of $100,000, think about that as our salary, then what would the natural log be? Well, on, on most calculators, this is ln for natural log, and the um, natural log is 11.513. The opposite of a natural log is e to the x. And so e to the 11.513 gives you $100,000 back. Now the point to understanding logs is to ask, if I change the log, what happens to the original number? So let's, let's practice, and then you'll see the point in our next part to this lecture. Suppose uh, my boss gave me a raise of to $105,000 then what is the natural log of 105,000? Well, on your calculator, you can do uh, 105 ln, and you will get 11.562. What happened to the log when we added 5%? Well, it increased the log by 0.05, right? That's the relationship I want you to see. Roughly, if you add 0.05 to the log, it adds 5% to the original number. Add 5% to the original number, adds 0.05 to the natural log. You got it? Um, but you can't carry this uh, general, you know, this, this specific small number to a general principle, and, and I want to show you that. What if we added 0.1 to the log, right? So instead of 11.513, 11.613. What would my salary be then? Well, let's see what, um, for example, in Excel, we can use the opposite uh, equals EXP. That's E to the number, 11.613. And it tells us that my new salary would be 110525 right? So that's what I have here. So if you had 0.05 to the log of a number, it adds 5%. But if you add 0.1, it doesn't add 10%. It adds 10.5%. Now let's keep going. If I add 0.15 to the log of a number, what happens to the salary? It adds 16% to 116,000. 0.3 doesn't add 30%. Instead, it adds about uh, 35% to 135,000. 0.5, 65%. And if you add 1 to the log of a number, it adds 172%, uh, really. It more than doubles your salary, 172%. Um, so the general rule is if you add small numbers 